We're in countdown mode with only a few days to go to the start of the Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race and it's about now that we start to get some consensus on how the weather will play out for at least the first part of the race. From Boxing Day, a large high over the Tasman Sea is forecast to block the typical pattern of southerly fronts, so after a 10 to 12 knot east-southeast breeze at the start, we're likely to see increasing nor'easters for the first 36 hours, up to 25 knots in Bass Strait, with fast downwind running conditions potentially all the way down the Tasmanian coast. But it seems there's every chance that the front runners will come to a screaming halt as they reach Tasman Island. So once again, Storm Bay and the Derwent River may play a critical role in this race. We took the opportunity when the forecast was announced to speak to some of the top navigators about these weather models and how they expected to play the key decision points en route to Hobart. That's a terrific forecast for the whole fleet, so it looks like a delightful race. Yeah, it's looking like the ridge should pull off shore a bit faster, which turns it into VMG running a bit earlier, um, which, which is good for us. We prefer the wind from dead behind rather than reaching. Uh, Comanche would love it reaching. Uh, InfoTrack would love it reaching. Yeah, a nice northeasterly downwind, and um, it looks like there might be a change for us at the very end of the race as we get to um, Tasmania, but otherwise overall we're, we're pretty pleased with uh, what the forecast looks like at the moment. I think most people are probably going to try and go to sea a bit. The pressure looks a little bit better offshore. There is a tendency on this coast for the, the sea breeze component, if it's a warmer day, to uh, uh, build more quickly on the, on the coast. So there's a sort of a balancing act between the two there. The current is fairly limited to one major eddy and for the big fast boats it's not worth paying a lot to go get it because you're not in it for very long. And so I think the big boats will mostly just, you know, head straight down the coast. Uh, as we get down to Batemans Bay, that's where the most southerly component of current is. So again, you're trying to get the best current, but the best pressure, so somewhere in between those two. Many people are aware the 52s, are, you've got plenty on when you've got 20 knots of wind. So at 25 knots of wind, we've got more than enough. Um, and the sea state becomes all important. It still looks like there's going to be a reasonable westerly um, coming through there and obviously if we're coming down on a northeasterly you've still got two lots of sea state that are going to be colliding so I can't imagine it's going to be pleasant anyway. At this stage it looks like the first time we'll see um, Tasmania is sort of Tasman Island. Wind waves are coming from the, the northeast most likely so um, it'll get a little messy down there and um, with the current swirls. The tricky part for us will be it's likely to get light at the end and getting up the river will, will, will challenge us. It's a very difficult race to, to win and get line on. It's this one you can do everything right up to Tasman Light and if there's no breeze from there, um, then there's no breeze from there. I have a, a memory of arriving at around 6am in the morning once. It took us four hours to get from John Garrow Light to the finish line. The boat that beat us finished five o'clock in the afternoon, took him 12 minutes.